Hello everyone, it's Bibi Cameron here. Welcome to another video. Last week I made a couple of videos using these stamps I have on my table. This is called Happy Fall Y'all from Honeybee Stamps. This stamp set is going to allow you to create beautiful sunflowers, add some bees and leave to your scenes. This stamp here is called A Corn Sisters and is the one I'm going to be using today. And the sentiments in this stamp set are the cutest thing ever. You can build different messages like there is no better friend than a sister, sending a season of blessings, you make me smile, or every time I think of you, I smile. And for the card today, I only stamped two of the girls in this image, just because I have two daughters and I wanted this card to be for my oldest daughter. I also want to show you that the stamps by Honeybee comes in different sizes, okay? So some are smaller than others and some others are huge, like this one here, which is called Gathered Together. I also made a card last week in a video sharing how to add color to these images. I really love these stamp sets to build easy and effortless scenes and mainly to enjoy coloring. I'm going to be using Bristol Smooth Paper. This is 270 grams. It's kind of ivory, it's not completely white, and it really adds a nice finishing to your cards because it's thick, it's lovely. Also makes a huge difference when you are using water-based markers. I hope you can give it a try. Now I'm going to place the stamp on the stamping platform. And as I didn't place the paper on a corner, I'm going to help me a little bit by placing those magnets really close to the stamp or the area on the paper I'm going to be stamping my images. That will help the paper in place and I make sure that it's not going to move at all. And if you see that black thing underneath the paper, that's a piece of ordinary black craft foam that I'm using always to get better impressions when using the stamping platform. I'm going to put the lid back in place and I make sure that it's in the clear setting. You know, I have been using the base of the stamping platform as a support or a portable table to color my images when I'm on the sofa or in the bed or anywhere else. So I just love that. And I'm telling you all these little things because before stamping, there are some things that can help us to have a better experience. So now I'm going to be using Honest Black Versafine ink. I love this ink or Simon Says Black Ink when I'm going to use water-based markers or watercolors. And as I only want to stamp two of the girls in this image, there are three, <laughs> I know you know that, <laughs> I'm going to use a post-it note just like that to mask the area in which the image overlap. And then I'm going to apply the ink. Then I remove my post-it note, and it's possible that when I do this, I get some of that ink on the stamp in that area in which I don't want to stamp. So I'm just grabbing a stamping chamois, which is amazing, a stamp cleaner, and just with water, and I remove the ink. And I'm just going to stamp like so. And I'm not speeding the camera because I really want to show you this process in real time. Okay, and you see there, oh my goodness, what happened there? She doesn't have an arm. So just grab one of these ultra fine pens. You see the tip is ultra fine and just go and draw a line and draw the arm. Check out. I'm really awful at drawing, trust me. I cannot do any draw, uh, but I can do this. These pens are ideal to add details to the images, to create or draw your own images or scenes and also to fix mistakes when stamping and you don't have a, a stamping platform. I accidentally stamp a tiny little dot next to the smaller uh, gear, but I'm going to fix that later. You won't be able to see that dot if you are that perfectionist. Sometimes I really don't like even a dot in the wrong place. <laughs> anyway, now it's time to speed the camera and show you how I finish stamping. I didn't want my sentiment to go straight. I kind of want a little bit of curve or kind of a circular shape or a wave. So I use a post-it note as a reference 
to drop the ends of the stamp just reaching that posty note and then I tried to make it as round as possible and then I was ready to stamp and this is a tip to stamp your sentiments when you are using different stamps to build a message so what I do is I just place first one of the stamps in this case is the one with the word sister and then I come and I place the other little stamps next to that one following the grid on the lead of the stamping platform and I also like to use a straight paper or a ruler I could not find my ruler so I'm using a post-it note here to guide me and to see if I place the stamps aligned and if I didn't then I just make the corrections And once I'm sure the sentiments are straight, I keep stamping. And this is the last step on the stamping. Then I'm going to apply colors. If you are using a stamping platform and you have these strong magnets, you don't need to remove your board from there. You just can leave it there and the magnets will act like a masking tape. So they are going to avoid the paper to warp. Well, at, at least that's what I have been finding when I'm using this. So that's what I love it so much. And I'm going to be using six. These are water-based markers. You can use any other water-based product to do this. Um, and I'm going to be using a skin tones. But something I want to tell you about the skin tones. You don't need to know the names of the markers, okay? Forget about the names of the markers. You go and find a very light yellow and a very light pink and mix them they will be a skin tone you can create darker skin tones by applying a little bit of brown or black or gray or purple and you can also uh, create lighter skin tones by applying a little bit of more water when you are applying your watercolor washes so what i'm doing here is just apply the ink directly from the pen on the paper and then i grab my water brush is slightly wet and I'm not making any pressure on the barrel I'm just passing the brush it's slightly wet and then I just blend the colors together and also spread the ink all over the image if you see there I'm applying uh, darkest colors in some areas mainly at the edges of the image I really don't mind about the lights and the darks I don't think too much about that I just apply color
and I was almost finishing my car when my baby Harris came to the scene. He was awake from his nap and I have to stop doing everything I was doing. Mommy have to stop. So I came back to my car in the evening. That's what you are going to see, that change in the light. So I'm here at my craft room before I was inside my house in my in, on my dining table. And I thought that was going to be a quite a bit nice to cut this panel using that stitched die from Honeybee, which is called A2 Square Stitched Frames. And they are absolutely lovely. I, I'm using this die for everything. And then I'm just going to trim the edge because this die doesn't really cut the edge. It only, it, was, it cuts the internal edge, but it doesn't cut the external or the outer line. Oh my goodness, I don't know how to say that in English. Anyway, I hope you can understand what I mean, but it cuts that internal square, as you see, that I just cut, uh, but it doesn't cut the edges. So I'm just using the Maxi Guillotine, which is my favorite tool to cut paper, and then I'm going to put this card together. I'm going to be using this uh, Stamping Up Foam Adhesive uh, Strips, I love this product because they provide a really strong bond. What I do to glue this down, and because I know this is a very strong adhesive and it can completely damage my project, I just peel the corners of that frame there or the tape and I just paste this in the correct position. So I started to glue down one corner, then the other one, making sure that everything is aligned. And I also try the central panel to see if it fits in the center, because sometimes with, as the frame is too thin, it can easily change the shape or slightly move from the position and that central piece is not going to fit there. So once I know everything is fine and I can go and peel that tape, I just do it like so. And once my frame is in place, I just paste the central piece. I just do this with any glue I have. And once this is done, I just grab some scissors and I just trim the edges, any excess paper around that picture. Then I glue this down on a piece of bright cardstock. And once this is done, I don't know why, but I wanted to add some sequins to this card somehow. Uh, every time I make a frame like this, I think in a checkered card. But of course, it would be a huge checkered card. Not ideal because the edges of the frame are very thin, so no ideal. Then I'm just going to glue some of the sequins here and there, just to add a little bit of a sparkle. And another thing I do is I just buy this pre-made 5 inches by 7 inches card bases and all I do is to glue down my panels. I leave a white edge all around and then I trim my cards. So this card measures 4 inches and a half by 6 inches. And this is more or less the average size of my cards. I'm not worried about an envelope because I make my own, own envelopes. But another thing is when I have an A4 sheet of paper, I cut it in four, okay, to get four front panels for my cards. So almost all my cards are the same size. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel, visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration, or join me in social network. I'm in Pinterest, Instagram. I have a small Facebook group to share creativity, and all the links are in the video description. You will also find supply list in the video description, and every time you buy through those links, I get a small commission at not extra cost to you. So thank you very much for your support and for watching. Happy crafting. Bye.